Today's lesson will cover the usage of the new numeric stepper form control of HTML5 as well as tying it to JavaScript for all of your application processing needs. The numeric stepper uses the input tag to render to the page just like our slider and other mechanisms do. The input tag of HTML5 is much more powerful and versatile than it used to be. This is the finished product of what we will achieve in this video lesson. You'll have a mechanism that allows a person to tick a number up and down to their selected value and you can put the minimum and maximum for those values within the code. And when I press submit, we tied it to JavaScript so it sends that value of 3 through our form processing. We will once again begin with a basic HTML5 web page structure and build our tiny application. The first thing we'll do is go into the body tag and establish our input tag. And the type is going to be number this time. And that's how you render the numeric steppers by using the number type. Then let's give that an ID. That way we can associate it to our JavaScript. Let's call it stepper1. Now the next attribute we want is the minimum. So you say min is equal to 1 or whatever number you want to establish as the minimum. And then you set the max again. This will be the maximum that it can be stepped up to. Let's make this just 10. You can make the maximum whatever you want as well. And the default value that you want it to be when it renders to the page initially goes here. And I'll just make mine 1. Or I'll just make it 5. That way it's in the middle. And they can tick up or down. But you can make it be at 1, whatever you want it to be. Now let's go ahead and close our input tag. Now let's add a couple of break tags just so we have some space in between the submit button and our numeric stepper. So what we're going to do here is put an input tag. Once again, this is going to be button type. That way we can have a button right there on the page. Type equals button. And on the on click event, when the button is clicked, what we want to do is fire off a JavaScript function. And we'll call that JavaScript function save value. So you can save that value to MySQL database using PHP or whatever by using an Ajax post in JavaScript. And what we'll do is establish this stepper1 ID as the variable, the one argument that we're going to send through this save value function in JavaScript. So JavaScript knows what stepper that we want to affect with this button click. Or JavaScript will know which stepper value it needs to process with the button click. And after on click, then you can just put a value for that button, what the button will say, its label. And that will say submit, close that input tag as well. So if you look in the design mode, you'll see a field and then a submit button. But if you render it in Google Chrome, you'll see the actual numeric stepper now. See? But if you press submit, nothing happens because we have not written any JavaScript. So now let's write some JavaScript this save value function. So let's go into the head tag, put our opening and closing script tags in, and let's type in function, and you can grab the name right here, save value, function, save value, and it's being sent one argument, which is the ID of the uh, numeric stepper. So you can just put in stepper. And that'll be the variable name that is associated with this particular stepper, stepper one. So if you had multiple steppers on the page, you could use this function in a universal sort of way. Now the first thing we'll do in this function is get the stepper value. We want to attain the value of the stepper, the number that's in it. So we'll say var step val is equal to document dot get element by ID and then instead of target, actually we'll name that target because that makes more sense. This will be the target element, which is stepper one in this case. So we'll save value for the target element. That way, the variable name for the stepper one is going to be target in this case within the function. So you say document dot get element by ID target, which is the tag we want to get a value for dot value, and that's how you get the number for the stepper value, the number that's in your numeric stepper. Now let's make it alert to pop up a little box that'll show you the value of the stepper. So you can just make an alert that says value plus step val. And I wrote alert for testing purposes only. Now here I'm just going to put a couple of code comments in for you. You can use Ajax to send the adjusted value within the numeric stepper to server storage if needed. So you can send it to PHP and then save it in MySQL or wherever you're saving it. 
So you use Ajax to send the value to PHP, and then PHP can save it on the server for you. And if you need an Ajax post video tutorial, that's at developphp.com at this link right here. And actually, if you just go to developphp.com and you type in uh, Ajax post tutorial, it'll probably come up within the search. Okay, now let's see what we have. Let's render this in Google Chrome, and keep in mind that not all browsers uh, will render this yet. In 2014, HTML5 goes web standard, so you can expect it to work in all browsers 2014, but for now, just testing Google Chrome. Okay, so if I adjust the value, I can go from 1 to 10. You see 10 is the max, and 1 is the min, so I can put it on whatever number I want, and then press submit, and then that value is within my JavaScript form processing now. And you can use this within a regular form scenario where you have a lot of items and fields to fill in. You put your numeric stepper in just like any other form field. And then when they press submit on the form, you can use its ID or its name to process with PHP. You might want to put a name attribute here of stepper one as well. That way you can process just like a normal form. But you can always use Ajax Post, which a lot of the web forms and web interaction seems to be going that way. When somebody changes something, it automatically updates on the server. Okay, so that shows you how to render the numeric stepper of HTML5 and also process it using JavaScript. We'll see you guys in the next lesson.